I spoke at UC Riverside once. You did? Why yeah, not? I will say that it was one of the best. I've spoken at a lot of colleges. It was one of the best experiences I had had. I found the kids to be curious, passionate, exciting. Um, uh, the energy was just fantastic. And uh, I just, I had a blast. And there's a lot of colleges and the kids are just checked out and and bored and privileged and over it and jaded. And that was not UC Riverside. So go Highlanders, Scotty the Bear. <laughs> That's exactly what a bear sounds like. Arr, 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 arr. Metaphysical Milkshake is a podcast in which Rain and I get to ask some of life's biggest, most existential questions. Like, why are we here? Um, you know, what happens after we die? Is there such a thing as free will? Um, but also, you know, some practical questions like how do you be good? And how many universes are there exactly? And you know, we're kind of armchair philosophers and thinkers. And so these are the kinds of questions that rattle, rattle around our heads all the time. And so we get to, you know, talk to each other about it a little bit. But we also recognize that, you know, we have limited minds when it comes to some of these bigger questions. And so we have access to some of the greatest thinkers um, that are out there. People like Malcolm Gladwell or Adam Grant or Elizabeth Colbert or Krista Tippett. And so we bring them on the podcast and they sort of use their expertise to help us make sense of some of these life's big questions. And, you know, we do all this with um, seriousness, but also with a, a, a lot of humor. We like to say that we, we take these topics very seriously, but we don't take ourselves seriously. And so it makes for kind of a fun, entertaining, but also deep and meaningful listening experience that hopefully you, you walk away with some knowledge, uh, you walk away maybe knowing yourself and the world a little bit better, but you also um, walk away with a little bit of a side ache because you're laughing so hard. I started a digital media company called Soul Pancake that has been around now for over 10 or 12 years. The original name for Soul Pancake, and it has produced a lot of viral video hits. It has over a billion video views, mm -hmm. including hits like Kid President and, and My Last Days and many other popular shows. And the original name for Soul Pancake was Metaphysical Milkshake, because mm -hmm. I just like the name, because I love the idea. I love metaphysical conversations, just like Reza said. And I really liked something that had to do with like a food item, blending <laughs> something, mixing something together. Sort of my favorite things, food and existentialism. There you go. Exactly. Exactly right. And um, it would have to be a non-dairy milkshake though. So <laughs> uh, I think it's a memorable name. I think it sticks in people's heads. Um, it's serious, but also kind of silly at the same time. And that's just how we want to do this podcast. So uh, we try and have a theme to every episode. Um, we have, uh, there's this uh, amazing author and speaker, Charles Eisenstein, and his, he has a book on um, sacred economics. So, and in it, he really examines w what money is. So for instance, we will take on a question like, what is money? Like, what is money when you really think about it? And what is the future of money? And what should, what could money be? Maybe money is kind of toxic right now. Is there a way to, to change it? Will it evolve? Is there a spiritual component to money? So, but we'll start an episode and we'll just kind of like be joking around and talking about our ideas around, around these themes. Then we'll bring in the guest. Um, we also ask the guests kind of like on the spot, instant life's big questions and uh, and we also love to hear from our listeners and we love to hear from our fans and people will call in with their questions or their thoughts. And sometimes we'll even bring them on the show. So we'll have two guests on a show, one of them being a fan who wants to discuss said topic. So by the end of the, and we keep it pretty short. So by the end of the, you know, 40 minutes, 45 minutes, you, I, I hope that people come away entertained 
but also really thinking about um, maybe a topic they hadn't considered um, on a on a whole altogether different level. Weekly podcast. Uh, I believe there are forty five a year. Is that right, Rain? We get we get seven weeks off. I think that's <laughs> I think that's right. Forty five. That's right. Forty five uh, conversations. Each of them, like Rain said, uh, focused on one big question. Rain and I have been friends for a little while. Um, we're big fans of each other. We got a chance to meet. Um, I think originally we met uh, through a, a, a an event um, that was meant to bring attention to the plight of Baha'i um, in Iran. If you're unfamiliar, Baha'i, which is a but almost a 200 year old religion is a religion that is essentially illegal in Iran, which is where the religion was founded. And so the Baha'i there have no real human rights at all. They can't own property. They can't get an education. They can't, they're not even really fully um, represented by the law. Rain is a, a Baha'i, a, a devout Baha'i. And so he is taken the, the plight of the Baha'i uh, in Iran very seriously. Um, and so the two of us did an event together and we just kind of hit it off. We had met um, a little earlier, you know, through some friends. And then those meetings just kind of blossomed into a friendship where, you know, we just kind of loved to get together and talk about some of these big ideas. We, mm-hmm. we really understood that we very much see the world through the same kind of lens. Um, We're both spiritual people, but we are both, you know, also very rational and scientific people. And we like to, you know, break down any kind of walls or barriers that often arise between science and religion or or faith and reason. And uh, we were having breakfast one day in some dive restaurant, I think, in West Hollywood or in Burbank or something. Uh, when suddenly it occurred to us, you know, we should, we should maybe start recording these conversations that we have, maybe get our hands on some of that big, big podcast money, you know, lots of, lots of, lots of hundreds of dollars to be made in, mm-hmm. in the podcast arena. Um, and so we kind of just started sharing that idea with some of our, our reps. Everybody loved the idea. And it just kind of happened from there. Next thing you knew, we were co-hosting Metaphysical Milkshake. Yes and no. This, is, uh, this podcast is its own separate project. And it is also a continuation of that talk show. Because in that... I did a short-lived show on Soul Pancake called Metaphysical Milkshake that took place in the back of my van where I would interview celebrities um, and try and touch into life's big questions. So I already knew there were a lot of people that were familiar with the name and that might help us as we kind of continued to uh, push forward. But this was really the show that I've been wanting to do the whole time. Um, And this is super exciting for me. This is my dream show. It's like I have a a brilliant co-host. I have a brilliant assistant to the regional podcaster in Reza, Dr. Reza Aslan. And, um, and at the same time, we get to interview some of the greatest minds and thinkers of the century, but we don't take ourselves too seriously and we have a lot of fun along the way. Um, well, I've always kind of been really interested in religion and spirituality, mythology, folklore. I didn't come from a very religious family, um, but when um, I was born in Iran and when we left Iran during the um, Iranian revolution, I think I had a firsthand experience of the power that religion has to transform societies for good and for bad. And it always um, instilled in me a lifelong fascination with religion as a phenomenon, though I didn't really have an opportunity to really express that that much, spiritually speaking, until I was much older. Um, And so, you know, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, it's just kind of always been a part of my identity. I've always thought of myself as, um, you know, a spiritual being inhabiting a material body long before I even understood what that phrase even meant. I think I understood that um, in a 
in a deeply emotional way. So, you know, these kinds of questions are questions that uh, I, that animate me and that have always been a part of how I've defined, you know, my very sense of self and my place in the world. The one thing that I will say though, and I kind of mention this all the time is that the older I get, the less time I have for these kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. Um, And so part of the reason why I wanted to do this podcast with rain, it's kind of a selfish reason, which is that it forces me to, to go back to my youth a little bit and to ask the kinds of questions that I used to ask when I was younger and that would keep me up all night, you know, and, um, and now I get to do that with, you know, some of the smartest people in the world. So it's, it's, it, there is definitely a selfish reason for this podcast uh, when it comes to my uh, participation in it. There are all kinds of episodes that we do where um, it's either stuff that I have studied before or even written about, um, or it's stuff that I've always been interested in and want to pursue. Um, Yeah. I mean, this is the great thing about having a podcast like this is that Rain and I are constantly, you know, we'll read an article and we'll be like, well, I want to know more about this. Mm. I could either take the time to learn myself or I could just book this person on a podcast and have them teach me. (laughs) And so uh, we do that a lot where we'll suddenly something will come across our desk or something. We'll see an alert on our phone and we'll be sit and we'll say, that's an episode. Let's get this person. Let's do this podcast. Well, a number of different reasons. Reza mentioned that I'm a member of the Baha'i faith. So uh, as a Baha'i, I've always been interested in um, uh, our spiritual search. Um, Baha'is also believe in the harmony of science and religion. So this idea that science and religion are not separate silos, but they're both expressions of one reality. And I was always the kid like at the party at the Dungeons and Dragons game who was like, hey, what do you think happens when we die? You know, I was the kid wanting to talk about God to on a, on a first date with a girl, you know, and um, which will clear a room fast. And I've just always been interested in, in these questions. And, and I kind of don't really understand why more people aren't. I am astonished at people that can go for years without thinking about pondering or diving into the reason that we're alive. Well, I mean, because there's just so much going on, you know? Yeah. You got to wake up and there's feed the baby. There's a lot of baby. Instagramming to do. There's a lot of there's so much do. Instagramming yeah. that you got to get through in a day. Who's got time for big questions? I think that Reza and I have a shared perspective that we are deeply curious about all of these questions, um, sociological, psychological, personal, artistic, spiritual, uh, intellectual, scientific, um, all the different ways one can study reality. We're in agreement on a lot. There's some things we don't agree on, but that's not really the point. This isn't a, one of the podcasts where it's like, he said, she said. Point like counterpoint. People on, yeah, point <laughs> counterpoint on the other side. But um, it's just about the exploration. It's about the asking of the questions and the exploration. And we're both down for that. You know, I think we have slightly different skill sets, um, but uh, we, you know, we're on the same mission and that's what's important. It's kind of like a marriage, isn't it, Reza? Like you have different skill sets, you might have different point of views, but if you're on the same mission, you're on the same track, then things can work out. I do feel like sometimes you're, we are married, yes. I'm we your are man wife. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. That's right. Well, we launched um, uh, with a great episode with our guest, Malcolm Gladwell. You may have heard of him. <laughs> uh, and Malcolm has a new book out called The Bomber Mafia um, about the way in which precision bombing um, in uh, developed during the Second World War um, became an instrument of death, uh, unlike what any of us could have ever imagined. And so this is kind of how the podcast works, is that we will oftentimes start with a big question and then find a guest that we want to talk to about it. Or sometimes we'll start with the guest and we'll turn the, the topic that that guest is 
you know, promoting into a larger question. So we took Malcolm's book and we transformed it into this big existential question about why we always as a human be as a race have to ruin everything. Right? Why is it that all of our good intentions, you know, always end up just creating more harm. Um, that was a real uh, fun one. That's um, the, uh, our next episode is with Adam Grant. Again, Adam Grant has a, a book coming out um, about rethinking some of your assumptions. So what we did is we turned that into a much a broader, more existential question, which was, um, what if I'm wrong? was the question. So it was a, an episode in which we were forced to really re-examine and rethink some of our most basic assumptions about who we are, how the world works, the things that we believe, the things that we stand for. Um, and then also a, a conversation about how to change other people's minds. And this, uh, that episode, I think, is a good example of what Rain was talking about, about how our worldviews are very much the same, but we just, we have different approaches. And um, you know, Rain and I have vastly different ways of thinking about this, you know, quote unquote, people on the opposite, on the other side of the aisle. And so that episode really forced us to um, unpack, you know, some of our, our assumptions and our strategies with regard to what we believe, how to confront people who believe the opposite of what we believe. Um, so those are two episodes. Um, I can keep going if you want. <laughs> that was perfect. Do you have one, Rain, you want to share real quick? Or do you have um, a particular one? The Gabor Mate one. That one, that one blew my yeah. mind. Gabor Mate, Dr. Gabor Mate is a real hero of mine. Um, and he's a thinker uh, about addiction and uh, has done incredible work over the course of his life. And the question there is like, why are we addicted to everything? And uh, or are we addicted to everything? And it really was uh, eye opening that the his whole philosophy is that addiction stems from trauma. So when you have trauma, you start to use whatever it is, drugs, alcohol, sex, gambling, you know, video games, shopping, eating to to soothe that trauma and escape the pain of that trauma as a coping mechanism. And in a way, as we kind of continued along the conversation, we realized that societally uh, we're in trauma, like our culture is in trauma. So what does our culture do to kind of soothe, escape, quell its trauma? So this idea, you know, addiction, uh, which is, you know, a compulsive activity that, that actually makes your, that you vow you're gonna stop, but it makes your life worse and worse. This is something our culture is doing. You know, this is something that 300 million Americans are doing. So uh, it's much broader than just on the personal individual level. That was a really eye-opening uh, episode. The ideal audience for Metaphysical Milkshake are uh, University of California Riverside students. <laughs> I think He's not Highlanders, lying. Highlanders, I think Scotty the Bear fans. Um, <laughs> and I'm not, gonna, I'm not disincluding San Bernardino. You know, they really go together hand in hand. It's like chocolate. Hey, and peanut hey, 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 don't don't put UC Riverside in the same category as San Bernardino. Come on now. Hey, why not? Because we rule. Highlanders all the way. Uh, no, but he's not. Rain's not wrong here. You know, I think I think a huge part of the audience is precisely the kind of, you know, those college aged uh kids for whom these questions are at the forefront of their experience before they become sort of bitter, grizzled old men like me and Rain. Yeah. Um, some of us more grizzled than others. Uh, but uh, I do think that, you know, it's, it's a podcast for people who just know deep, deep in their soul <laughs> that there's more to the world than yeah. just this kind of material experience that we have every day that, yeah, okay, you get up, you make breakfast, you go grocery shopping, you go to work, you come home, you watch the office, you go to sleep, but there's gotta be something 
else out there. There's got to be a, a, a deeper level of experiencing life um, that you may have been able to, you know, touch just a little bit more when you were younger and you had more time to think about these things. Um, this podcast is, is for you. It gives you an opportunity to kind of really think about some things that you don't normally get to think about in your day-to-day -day life. And we do it in a fun and entertaining and, and funny and lighthearted way so that we make sure that you're having a good time while you are contemplating the meaning of life. You can find the links for that by following us on social media. So it's at Rain Wilson, of course, and at Reza Aslan on both Twitter and Instagram. But uh, also check out at Meta Milk Podcast on Twitter and at Metaphysical Milkshake on Instagram. And all the instructions of how to call in, leave your voicemail message, perhaps you'll be contacted, you fill out a form, it's a, through a device called SpeakPipe. It's really cool. You get to li leave an audio message or an audio life's big question, but you can find all of that stuff on our social media. Well, as a matter of fact, I would say that most of them don't have an answer. Or even if we do come up with something like an answer, you know, we are um, uh, not so arrogant as to think that we've kind of solved the problem. But, you know, Rain and I both believe that the question is more important sometimes, right? Yes. The, the path is more important than the destination and the question is more important than the answer. And so simply the act of asking the question and pursuing the answer, that in and of itself, I think is enough to really experience the fullness of what life is supposed to be for, for human beings. So these are the universal human questions that have been around since the dawn of time. These are the same questions that our caveman ancestors were uh, thinking about and the questions we were thinking about when we lived in villages and, and uh, when we were first forming you know, nation states and in Renaissance Europe and then on college campuses. So they're questions that um, are distinctly human. You know, what is it? Uh, the question that underlies all of this, all of these conversations is, what does it mean to be a human being? It has definitely well, brought up new questions. That's for sure. You know, I think, I think there's, there's some questions that we are, very interested in pursuing um, questions about isolation and what that does to, to the human being, to the human mind. Questions about what the world looks like now that we've entered the age of global pandemics. Um, those are questions that, we, that were a surprise to us. They, you know, they, they're not questions that we had kind of originally conceived of and they definitely came out of the pandemic, I would say. I think to one of the larger questions is this is something that i mean right now it's devastating rural india you know six months ago it was devastating rural california um it's something that connects us all as human beings on the planet are we going to rise to this challenge are we going to arise to the global challenges that face us as a species on this planet it's not a matter of legislation here or this vaccine here or not this mask here. It's a matter of like human beings were attacked by an entirely new old virus. <laughs> and we're also being attacked by climate change. We're being attacked by income inequality. We're being attacked by uh, corrosive racism. And are we all together going to rise up and and do something about that. Are we going to rely on our better natures to kind of, you know, heal, fix, problem solve and get along? Can't we just all get along? That's part of it. And I think for me too, as far as the pandemic goes, like I've experienced a lot of anxiety, you know, a lot of anxiety and, and suffering during it. And I know a lot, I'm certainly not alone. So, you know, anxiety feels like a modern problem but I assure you it's been around since the dawn of time. And how does one deal, what tools does one use to deal with anxiety? That's another big question. Mm -hmm. Bob Dylan, whether he's alive or dead, and he may be kind of halfway in between the two at this point. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, I'm gonna say Jesus. 
just to just so I could be like, hey, how did I do? Right? I do okay. <laughs> um, I would, would want to ask him what Jesus thinks. <laughs> um, I I think you know to me Bob Dylan uh, typifies uh, pure artistry and creativity, and he's been doing it since 1962. Um, every decade, he has made great music uh, that is, seems oddly relevant to the times. It's not dated and old-fashioned and out to pasture. So just kind of a, about the creative process. Who better to discuss the artistic process, the imagination, than, than uh, Robert Zimmerman? I kind of gave mine away. Uh... Mine is um, how to be good. How, how can I be good? I think that's probably my, my life's biggest question. I, I think hand in hand in that, for me, it's kind of like, how do I know I'm doing the right thing? How do I know I'm going down the right path? How do I know the choices that I'm making are the best choices for my God-given talents? Will there be a planet when I graduate? I mean, I'm saying it in a jokey and depressive way, but I think that if you're a college student right now, no matter what you are doing, no matter what you're pursuing, no matter what your goals are, if the care for the planet and the climate isn't part of those goals and ideas, then it may not matter what you've got planned. I think that um, the thing that I would say to young students is um, it always used to be growing up that it was kind of like the philosophy was like, hey, don't be a dick. Just be nice. Don't hurt anybody else and live a happy life and that'll be great. It sounds reasonable, right? Uh-uh. It's not going to cut it. It's not going to work. Not anymore. It's not with 8 billion people on this planet and the direction that it's heading with, you know, with racism, with income inequality, with climate change, um, and many, many other uh, global issues. Uh, we need to, don't be a dick, take care of ourselves, have a nice life, and we need to help others. And if we have 8 billion people all seeking to help others of those 8 billion, then we can turn things around. That's not a question, that's a piece of advice. But whatever it is that young people are doing to make sure that there's a service component in what they're doing. And it can be a service component. That doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, I have to go hand out sandwiches to the homeless. Like there's lots of ways to be of service. Like Reza is a storyteller. You know, he tells stories, whether it's in book form or now on podcast, he produces television shows, writes screenplays. Like there's all kinds of ways that stories heal us and bring us together. So there's different ways to be of service. It, it doesn't have to be working in a soup kitchen, although that's perfectly nice. Yeah, I mean, we're, UC Riverside has the highest percentage of first time college students, uh, you know, in a family um, of any other UC program in California. And it's something that, that we take an enormous amount of pride over. Um, and what I would say to those students is that that pride comes with a sense of responsibility, whether you want it or not, whether it's fair or not. You as an educated member of your community um, and culture have a responsibility to represent that community and culture. I'm not saying that you need to necessarily go into you know, political work or social work or whatever the case may be. Be a banker, be an actor, be a writer. But no matter what you do, recognize that you're only able to do that because of the sacrifices that were made before you and that you owe something to those people, to the ones, whether from your family or your ancestors or what have you, who sacrificed to get you where you are now, you can't forget them. You have to bear that responsibility um, for the rest of your life. And again, I get it. That seems like a, a huge ask that's a big burden like who am i to suddenly be responsible for representing my entire culture it's not fair that's right it's not fair 
but it is true, you know, and, um, and that's what I would kind of uh, most, I think, passionately argue for when it comes to the kinds of kids that were graduating at Riverside. Uh, hand in hand with that, um, that was really well said, Reza, and amen. And I think that this country was um, two, has two histories. It was built on the backs of immigrants. Um, it was also stolen from the backs of <laughs> its original inhabitants. Uh, in California, of course, this all used to just essentially be Mexico. Um, but the future of this country is is black and brown, you know, and mm. this is an exciting time because um, people in uh, there, there were there are many, many struggles ahead. But people of color in this country um, have a greater and greater stake and ownership of this country and need to take that mantle of leading this diverse, um, uh, you know, out of many, one e pluribus unum. It's time for that concept to, to kind of be realized. And, um, and it, it's really exciting to see uh, the amount of attention and focus being put on young black and brown people, and especially young women of color, uh, taking leadership positions in in everything, in the arts, in politics, in in science, and uh, it's a truly exciting time. I think it's the dawn of a revolution and a completely new way of being an American. Uh, I would go back and tell myself to um, invest in Apple. I think that's probably my top. The, in question form, it would be, why aren't you investing in Apple? I would uh, go back in college and say, rain, invest in Blockbuster Video. <laughs> It it's a all, growth market. All in, all it's a growth in. market. Look how many look how many stores there are. <laughs> what could go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? Uh, in so far as kind of, you know, what I would say to myself or what questions I would say. Um, uh, do you want to go first, Rain? <laughs> uh, you know, I think that um, for me college age and and uh, and i said i say this to a lot of college age students like i i had no every every person has a capacity right to to do good to be creative to make things to lead we don't know what that capacity is and chances are we're underselling unless you're a gross narcissist you, chances are you're underselling your personal capacity to make a difference. Um, you may think of yourself, I used to think of myself in a very small way, like, oh, I'm a, I'm a goofy little actor and I'll play some side roles as a goofy little character actor. And it's like, then I founded a company, then I wrote some books, now I'm podcasting, I'm producing. I'm not trying to sing my own praises, but I had no idea when I was 22, that I had the capacity to do all that. I thought of myself as very small. And sometimes we keep ourselves very small. So for college students to just know, like probably your capacity for greatness is much larger than you think it is. So just allow for that expansion. I think what I would say, when I was in college, I was so like solely focused on um, success and being the best at everything and and uh being at the top of my class top of my game uh you know that i never really had a chance every victory that i that i got was just i never i never actually um got a chance to enjoy it because i was just thinking about okay what's the next one what's mm -hmm. the next one what's the next one and yeah if i were if i go back i'd be able to tell you know that college age to me slow down you're gonna be fine <laughs> you're gonna do well everything is okay uh eventually you will just you know uh connect your wagon to uh rain wilson and everything will be fine um but in the meantime enjoy enjoy the things that are happening you know like i would get into a great college and instead of actually celebrating i'd be like okay well where am i going to go to grad school though 
then I would get into the grad school of my choice and I'd be like, yeah, but what if I'm not the best person there? You know, <laughs> so just relax, enjoy the things that are before you. Don't always think about what's on the other side. I also think for college students, it's really under, important to understand that you don't have to have it all figured out by 22. You know, you really so don't. True. Like your educational process, your career process is a journey. Take your 20s to try things, get educations, read books, get work experience, travel, get life experience. The, this, this kind of like cultural pressure, like I need to have my career figured out in undergrad and then I need to get my advanced degree in that in order to solidify that by 24 or else I'm not going to get the internship. It's like, it just doesn't work that way. You know, um, go sail around the, on, as a merchant Marine, you know, you'll have a much better chance of getting that internship. If you have being a merchant Marine on your resume, than like I went and got my degree and I checked all the boxes, like have, have life experience and you'll, you'll, Things will start to get clear by the time you're around 30. Things start to kind of like get a little more clear. 20s is not that time. I always say uh, your 30s are when you get to actually be the person you thought you were in your 20s. Perfectly said. College students should be la asking the life's biggest possible questions when they're in college. That's what they should be spending their time mm -hmm. doing. That's different than what's my job going to be when I'm 23? It's what is my purpose? Why am I here? Why were we created? What is this miracle of consciousness that I carry around in my brain? This is amazing. I'm looking out these little things and then I'm seeing beauty and I'm seeing emails and I'm having feelings and emotions and I'm, I'm, I'm in a body. I experience myself as being in a body. Am I really in a body? What if my consciousness is you know, like a computer, this is just an avatar. Those are the questions college students should be asking all the time throughout the entirety of their undergrad. That's awesome. Well, it's great talking to you guys. Thanks for having us so on whatever this is that, that we did. <laughs> but it was really fun. It was nice talking to you. <laughs> is there like a hand signal? Like, go Riverside. There is, but it's too rude for public. Oh, you've got... Seriously? That's... Ours up. I don't know the hand thing, but I, I know our fight song. Oh, Highlanders. No, I don't. I, we don't have a fight song. Let's Thanks, guys. That was fun. Thank Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Take care.